And when you're dead, you're done Let a good time you roll Together, let the good times roll. Don't sit there, mommy, talking trash. If you wanna have a ball, you gotta spend some cash. Let the good times roll. Hey, let the good times roll. Well, we don't care if you're young or old. Get together, let the good times. Welcome back to episode 8, second half of the Russian leg. I left you last time with a knackered subframe, currently in Novosibirsk, where I had to spend about a week with Mark Sharapova and his family, whilst the beast had its back mended. Not Amazon, not Mississippi, but... And that's a Russian shortcut. Interesting. Interesting? Interesting. <laughs> How about that for a repair job? They've even reinforced the bracket and put a strut on it as well. Both sides. Fantastic stuff. Better than new. Take note, Suzuki. How about this? You'd never think this. The garage that's just done the repair on the beast, uh, the chap's just invited me upstairs for a coffee. <laughs> and uh, look at all the bikes he's got upstairs above the garage. That's incredible. And the best bit is yet to come. How about that? Look, pride and joy. Checks us out in his front room, underneath the telly. The man's got class. As always, the hospitality in Russia is second to none. I can't thank Mark and his family enough for looking after me. We ended my stay there with a bit of a boozy serenade session. It was a good night. Then it was time to hit the road. So, I've got the beast back, but uh, it's time to go medieval on the kit now. And I am trying to shed some kit. It's not all mine, by the way. Some of this, well, up most of this is uh, Mark's, the chap I'm staying with at the moment. He's done an amazing job on the wells. They're cracking. And he even fixed the uh, the hanger for the can because that snapped off as well. So I yeah, am chuffed. But got to lose weight. I've got to lose weight, and I've got to lose some weight in the kit as well, drastically. So <laughs> pants are best, I think. That's just fuel. And then just about everything's in there now. And I've got some, uh, my clothes and sleeping bag are in another Krieger bag, which I'll pop on the back. Tents hanging on the front. And that's about it. Surprises continued as I was flagged down by some Russian bikers and invited to a Spetsnaz barbecue. Another boozy night in the woods in Russia. Well, it's finally happened, day 60, and we hit 50,000 miles. Loving it. These are good bits of kit, these roto packs. It's only about uh, just under four litres in each one, but you know, carry a couple of them and it's an extra 60, 70 miles, I suppose. And out here you need that because um, there's stretches where there's about 300k with no fuel. So I think I probably will run out, but it'll, uh, it'll help. So... I think we'll do a little lesson in Russian roads. Sometimes they're like this. Beautifully smooth, gorgeous tar tarmac. Couldn't get better. And some are like this. And worse. Check this road out. This is what I've had for about the last 20, 30k. Hard going. That's the good bits, that's fairly firm. The rest of it is soft sand and silt and dust everywhere.
and I think hopefully there's only another K to go of it but I've had four or five bouts of this already today it's bloody hard work the old beast is taking an absolute kicking but she's still going touch wood I need a truck I've housed myself up in a, a hotel for a, well for two days just now in a Kursk. Uh, a chap called Andrew Edwards, he's a Aussie bloke, well Kiwi, Kiwi originally, Aussie chap, who was touring around Russia by himself, got in touch through Horizons Unlimited hub forum. He's just popped by the hotel, a couple of coffees and a, a nice long chat. He's heading off, uh, trying to get his chain and sprocket fixed. Fantastic, got another place to see in um, Australia and um, another visitor to the UK when he comes over. The beer? The beer. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, it's a, it's a can of beer, about that big, and it's got, it's got the beer on it. Right. So you, that's the one you got to have. Okay. What's <laughs> right? it called, do you know? No. I just drink the stuff. <laughs> Why have I got to have it? Is it, is it vile or is it good? Because every Russian drinks the beer. <laughs> right, the beer okay. it is. I'm absolutely loving this, folks. Uh, Russia is just an incredible country. The welcome you get from people, it really does rub off on you and I urge anyone, anyone that's thinking of doing a trip to Russia, don't believe the bad press this place gets. Everybody you meet, even in Russia, people will, will say to you, you know, oh, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. But when you do go there, the people are fantastic. You're going to get wrongings everywhere. I mean, look at the UK, there's plenty about. I have never experienced warmth and generosity like you get in Russia and it just magnifies the further east you go. The people are superb and the country, uh, especially from Novosibirsk, it really starts to change. You're, you're in Siberia then, the place gets really green. It's, it's stunning and now tomorrow I'll head to Lake, uh, Lake Baikal and head south down to uh, the Mongolian border and then uh, Ulaanbaatar for Friday evening to meet Ed March hopefully. Loving it. Absolutely love it. That's Russians. They're, yeah. they're so inviting. They're so in, in, in the idea that they'll they'll let you into their life. Yeah. They want to invite you because they want to they want to experience what you're doing. Yeah. And that's what it's about. That's what's so cool. It's the biggest lake, it's actually that class as a sea. Yeah. Yeah, it's the biggest freshwater lake in the world, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Well, another great day. We just had a, a nice ride around the lake and just been down to have a look at the view. Now uh, Bruce is off on his adventure once again and I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to go and sit in the hot springs for the day. Yeah, not yeah. bad, eh? Not bad. <laughs> no, not a bad life, mate. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's all bad. And then um, around the other side of the lake, basically on the eastern shore, and I've got a friend that lives on one of the little islands, so um, a Russian guy. So I'll go and stay with him for a day or two and have a good time and drink a few vodkas and uh, relax. It should be great. It's a tough life, this travel, oh, isn't it? No, tough. It's, a, it's a dog's life. <laughs> Hopefully my wife doesn't see this and realise that I actually do <laughs> enjoy myself too much. And then there was just one. I'm carrying on to Ulanude and then down to Mongolia. Hopefully meet up with uh, Cuba and Simon, the two Polish bikers that I met when the subframe broke. Uh, bumped into them earlier on today. So they're going to be going the same way. So hopefully I'll meet up with them later today, somewhere down near the Mongolian border. And then tomorrow to Ulaanbaatar. Can't believe it. Loving it. Guess what? Frame snapped again. I'm uh, about 80 miles short of Ulanud. Really had enough of this bike. Anyway, see what I can do. Right, well, the next morning, as luck would have it, I met a Russian biker before the frame snapped um, and he gave me his number just to keep in touch because he was also going to Vladivostok. So I gave him a tinkle. Uh, last night after the frame snapped, um, he was in a hotel in Ulanud, uh, so he kindly sent me the uh, coordinates and I managed to limp the bike squatting on the tank. 
bloody painful, took about an hour and a half, but I got there. So when I arrived, he had some contacts for some bike clubs, uh, called around, managed to find a mechanic, went to them this morning, met him. He couldn't do it, but he told us of another one who can argon weld. So we're here now at this garage and we've just stripped the beast. So as you can see, it's just cracked straight on the weld again, same place, fourth time now. Every frame I get, it always breaks there. But there's no problem, apparently. This is Michael, who I met yesterday. These guys are incredible. Fix anything. Hopefully. Hi folks, uh, I'm about 300 miles west of Cheetah. I'm pretty much sitting on the tank all the time now to try and take as much weight off the, the back as possible. My knees are shot. Uh, it just feels like I'm blowing out my knees all the time because I'm in like a squat all the time. For any of you that think this is easy, it's bloody not, I'm telling you. It's the hardest I've ever worked on a bike. But we're getting there. I think I'm about two, two and a half thousand miles from Vladivostok. Hardest bit is yet to come. The last section, last thousand, fifteen hundred miles is torture. No road, bad road, even worse road, and then some road. So, stay tuned. You get what I ever heard. Don't tell a soul, don't breathe a word. It's a very simple tale, all about a sight and frail. How she. We're at the top of a mountain here, yeah. halfway between Urunudi and Chita. <laughs> really making me work for it now. I just pulled over because I just wanted to check the subframe, put the side stand down, jumped off the bike, went to have a look and um, the bike just toppled over the other way, just fell on the ground. So luckily there was a lorry coming by, they stopped, there's two lads, they helped me pick the bike up. There's no damage that I can see. I've whipped the sides off just to have a quick look at the subframe and one of the bolts fell out. So good job. I'll tighten that up and fingers crossed. There's a hell of a storm coming. Oh, bloody Vostok, you can't come soon enough. Still loving it though. Just. How good is this? I'm in deepest, darkest Siberia, middle of nowhere. I mean, this, this place was once the infamous Zilov Gap. It was basically like a 600 mile stretch through the tundra that was inaccessible, there was no road. Up until a few years ago, and then they built this road. And it's now, at the moment anyway, it's now probably one of the best roads in Russia, quality wise. Look what I found in the garage, ginger. Can't believe I've got a bottle of ginger in Siberia. Chuffed. This stuff is the nectar of the gods. Cheers. Oh. Like being at home. You know, I've I've learnt on this trip and on the last one not to count my chickens. At the moment, things are going well. The weld seems to be holding. The road's good, but I know you just can't take anything for granted. The worst thing you can do is start planning what you're going to do when you get wherever you're going tonight, or say, all right, I'll get here tonight. I'll get there by the end of the week. You just can't do it on a trip like this because you don't know what's going to happen in the next hour, let alone in, by the end of the day. We'll see. This is a notorious stretch of road. This is renowned for bandits, um, so I'll not hang about for too long. And there's a severe lack of petrol, so I might run out. We'll see. It's Russia. <laughs> Like Venus, pretty. Oh, you gotta love sand. From goodness knows, she struts like a peacock, wiggles like a snake. Let me tell you, for goodness sake, it must be jelly, cause you know jam, don't change. Yeah, that does say 1,058 miles until the next turning. Well, this doesn't look good. Look at that storm coming. And I'm nearly out of fuel. What was I saying about don't count your chickens? Last night's camping spot. Not quite as serene as normal, but uh, needs must.
They've got these inspection ramps all over Russia. Um, most laybys have got them. Good idea, if you know what you do. And I'm right behind it. Well, folks, I'm at the junction of the two main roads uh, in Russia if you're into adventure motorcycle travel or adventure travel. One road is going to uh, Khabarovsk, where I'm heading just now, and the other one splits north, up to Tinder, and then Yakut, and it's the Road of Bones all the way to Magadan. I would love to do the Road of Bones, I really would love to do it, but uh, in all honesty, I'm ready for Vladivostok now, and so is the Beast. Um, she's done incredibly well, she really has, but uh, I'm ready to get to Vladivostok and then get to Korea and get some TLC. Russia's fantastic, but it is hard. It is really hard on you and on your kit. Quite prehistoric looking, isn't it? It was out here, out in Siberia, where they recently found the remains of a preserved mammoth and they found blood in some of its organs and they're going to try and clone a mammoth. Pretty amazing, Jurassic Park stuff, eh? And the scientists that are doing that, allegedly, are in Novosibirsk. Right folks, time for a quick 101 on Russian roads. The things that I've learnt in my sort of four or five weeks, however long it's been, I've been here. Do what the signs tell you. When they say slow down, slow down. Uh, and when they say there's bumps, they bloody mean it. It's weird, sometimes they say there's bumps and you hardly notice a ripple. Other times they don't mention anything and it feels like you're falling off the edge of the world. You go from tarmac to absolutely nothing and you're going through rock, sand, dirt, gravel. Bridges at crossing points, um, you'll see them coming up, just, just normal little bridges. The start and the end point where the expansion joints are, civil engineer you see. Slow down for that because almost always there's either a big hill or crest there bumping the road or a sump one or the other and they can be pretty savage if you hit them at speed so just slow down for them any inclines where the heavies if it's a big incline where the big lorries and everything are, are, are on that side of the road as they're going up and they're working trying to get up they rip the tarmac up so you'll find that if it's not sort of derivations bumps do you know you'll notice you're kind of doing that as you're going up the hill cross over onto the other side and generally that can be smoother although Having said that, the flip side is, when the heavies get over the hill and they start going down, once they start getting on the brakes down towards the bottom, then again they start gathering up all the tarmac, so that can get quite bumpy. Just lift your vision and often get over onto the other side of the road, that can help. While I'm on that topic, once you pass Novosibirsk, the driving becomes very interesting because Novosibirsk and onwards, there's a booming trade in second-hand cars imported from Japan, uh, Korea, places like that. And they're all, hang on, left-hand drive. No, right-hand drive, like we are in the UK. Now, when you drive on the right over in Russia, that can make driving or overtaking quite interesting because what they tend to do is all of a sudden they'll just appear from behind the heavy that's coming towards you. Rather than just having a quick peep to see what's around, they can't because they're on the wrong, side of the, the, the wrong side of the car. So they just swerve straight out. So be wary of that because you often get cars just flying straight out behind uh, Arctics and things straight at you. And because you're just a little bike, it's up to you to get out of the way. Having said all that, driving in Russia for me is what it's been all about. There are a few sections where there's, there's no fuel. You're looking at about 190 to 240 miles. So bring extra fuel with you. But for me, the road is what it's all about. I'm absolutely loving it. The really hard bit comes down to Vladivostok. It's going to be a day, maybe two days. I think it's about 800 to 1,000 kilometers of hell, apparently. No road, bad road, no road. That will be fun. But anyway, best get back to it. Cheers. <laughs> That's what I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometres to do. Oh man, <laughs> whose idea was this? Well folks, I'm about uh, 150 miles, I think, uh, away from Khabarovsk. Kabarov Can't remember the name of the place actually. It's the last stop before Vladivostok, so I'm trying to get there tonight. I don't want to camp out, honestly, this place these uh, mozzies are like spitfires, look at them, they're, they're huge, I'm actually bricking it, I should have my public order kit on for this malarkey, that will be MP5, but anyway, I don't fancy camping out in this and there's not many places, it's all marshland that you can see out around here, 
so it's quite hard to get camping. That's my excuse. I slept in a lay-by last night, you shouldn't do that. Um, there's all sorts of horror stories. Good as gold last night, no issues, but pretty uncomfortable sleeping on concrete. But anyway, see that over there? That way there, China. Not far, um, probably about, I don't know, 60 miles from the border, something like that, 70 miles. But anyway, I'm gonna get on because I'm gonna get eaten soon. All right. It's about day 69, 70, I think. Uh, on the last leg to Vladivostok. The road's not been too bad so far. Um, good stretches, bad stretches, non-existent stretches. Same as most of Russia, to be honest with you. Uh, I know there's a horrendous bit to come, the last section. Don't know if I'll get there tonight. It's starting to rain now. And uh, in the off-road sections, I don't fancy my chances much on the beast and the off-road bits in the rain, but we'll see. I'm just going to keep plodding on, really, and just uh, grind the miles out. About uh, 350 miles to go, I think, so I may well end up camping tonight and do the last leg in the morning. We'll see. But anyway, nearly there. <laughs> Determination and his social know-how have all brought him almost total acceptance among the people. Right world, this is Phil, Phil Cricks. Phil, over to you. Well, nice night last night, ended a little bit early. A few too many vodkas and a bit of a collapse of window there. Um, going a little bit crazy in Vladivostok. A few more days to go then up to Magadan and hopefully get the bike off the boat and then start of the trip and just, just a little trip for me across to London. I'm looking forward to it and hopefully, well, not doing the old Road of Bones, but doing the new Road of Bones as such, but uh, that's that's the part I'm really aiming for. Yeah, it's been sort, mate. Great to meet you. And uh, we'll catch up again. I'll see you in Australia. See Fantastic. you in Oz, brother. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad that our past lined up, even though it was for a few days. But uh, it's good to see that your trip is going so well, and uh, I guess you're halfway through yours, or just about. I am finishing up mine. It's been almost two years, and it's time to go back home. Maybe get back to work, make some money again, and uh, and sort of put it all together. I think what sort of has made it is, is meeting people like you and like Phil, and you know, just having these amazing experiences and being able to share it with uh, with you guys, and uh, and of course learn from from you guys. So it's been awesome. And uh, and again, last night was an interesting night. <laughs> I want to say more. <laughs> yeah, I think Phil touched up on that one too. So yeah, it ended a bit early for us too, didn't it? Yeah, you carried on, you flew the flag, but uh, well, the two of you. So yeah, excellent. It was great man, it was great. Really a pleasure. And, yeah. I uh, wish you all the best and uh, safe travels, safe ride. Cheers, brother. And you. Yeah, you bet. We're puzzle crossing the UK, hopefully. Eh? And that's Alex in the background. All right, Absolutely. dude. Absolutely. <laughs> So this is it, I'm on the ferry now. The Eastern Dream, DBS Eastern Dream, goes from uh, Vladivostok to Donghau and then across to, I think it's called Sakimento in Japan. So I'm doing the Korean leg straight to Donghau. I went for the first classroom because you only share with one other and uh, I thought I got a bed, but uh, obviously you just get two pillows. <laughs> It was only 30 quid difference between the two, between third class and first, so I thought, why not? And in that, uh, there's a bathroom. Not too bad. 
that's Russia done uh, on the ferry now heading to Korea um, wow I've had five days I think six days in uh, six days in Vladivostok not an anti-climax by any stretch I was just so tired by the time I got here that I just not been able to do anything I just vegged um, Russia awesome awesome country awesome I, I urge anybody to come to Russia in all honesty scenery wise apart from Lake Baikal there's plenty of nicer places, nicer places in the UK, certainly in Europe, but it's just the sheer scale of the place and for me the people, the people made Russia. I've never experienced generosity and a welcome like that anywhere. Complete strangers don't even speak English and you know within five, ten minutes of meeting somebody at the side of the road you'll be in their home. You know, even if they have nothing you get to some of these places and they are a shack and literally you know they have the clothes on their back and they'll give you them. I kind of hope that when I get back to the UK, I'll continue that sort of ethos to, to people I meet, you know, to travellers that I meet. I'll do what I can to help people. Yeah, it's been good. I've loved it. Crack of time, loved it. If you get to Vladivostok, I stayed at the CU Hostel. Um, it is a bit of a kazi, to be perfectly honest, but the people there make it. You know, it's, uh, it's what you make of it, isn't it? It's a good social place. Loved it. Forgot to mention, the beast. The beast is having to stay here for a week without me got it and it's going to meet me in Japan. It's just working out too expensive to take it to Korea and then take it to Japan from Korea. You know, all in all it's going to be about two and a half thousand dollars to do both and I haven't got that money. So I had to make the decision to leave the bike here, go and do Korea by myself. I'm just going to stay with my dad for a few days, then head up to Seoul, then try and get up to the DMZ if I can, up to the border and then back to Donghao and I'll pick up the, the ferry to Japan. But anyway, the next stage of the story, Korea. Funny old thing being bound like a book, but the truth can be found. 